I'm an astronomer. Astronomers are used to huge numbers, huge stretches of time. But even though we can predict some things billions of years ahead, many things we can't predict even 10 or 20 years ahead. I've written this book to see what we can say about what our world will be like in, say, 20 or 30 years. Things are changing faster now than ever before. And indeed, if we think in the cosmic perspective, the Earth has existed for 45 million centuries. But this is the first century when we humans are so dominant, there are so many of us, we're using so much in the way of resources, that we are determining the planet's fate. But we can certainly predict that artificial intelligence will be far more advanced than it is now. It can be able to do many jobs which are now done by humans. And incidentally, the jobs it will take over are not going to be the uh, uh, jobs which are sort of unskilled and routine. Um, it'll be jobs which are done by professional people in many cases. Lawyers, doctors, people like that. The hardest jobs to mechanise will be carers for young and old people, gardeners in public parks, custodians and things like that. It will be a big shifting in the labour market. Another big technology is biotech. We can now modify the human genome and actually change people themselves. And this is a really big difference because the one thing that's been constant throughout the millennia of human history is human nature and human character. We can read the literature written by the Greeks and Romans 2,000 years ago and feel an affinity for those people there. But a few hundred years from now, human beings may have changed completely so that they have no conception of our emotions and the way we lived and thought. So that's a qualitatively new way in which things are changing. Another big change is that we are no longer going to be limited to our planet. We're going to be able to go into space. I personally think that the case for sending people into space, the practical case, is getting weaker all the time with every advance in robotics and miniaturization. Robots can do in space all the things that humans might do. They can explore the planets, they can fabricate huge structures. But nonetheless, I hope that there will be people living on Mars by the end of the century. The book's really about the way in which we will have to cope with this ever more powerful technology. We've got to be evangelists for it because just as our present life is better than that of previous centuries through technology, so it can be better still. And in particular, it can be better for those who are now disadvantaged. But it raises big threats. The biggest threat, in my perception, is that it's possible for a small group or even a single person to cause a disaster by error or by design which cascades globally. The challenge which the future is going to present is going to be the challenge to have optimal use of new technologies to take advantage of its benefits and avoid its downsides, but at the same time uh, to ensure proper governance because it's going to be a big stress in my opinion, a growing stress between security, liberty and privacy. And something else, one thing which you all worry about is the growing disparity between the living conditions in the fortunate parts of the world, like the United States of Europe and the increase in China, and the less developed parts of the world, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa. We need to ensure those gaps don't grow. Simply on humanitarian grounds, we need to help those people, but in a self-interested way too, because the one difference is that people in these disadvantaged parts of the world, they now have mobile phones, they know what they're missing and they are naturally going to be very embittered. So we will not have a peaceful world at all unless we can ensure that there is a juster distribution of wealth and opportunities across the world. So in this book I'm speaking partly as a scientist, partly as a citizen, and partly just as a worried member of the human species, where we need to think globally and longer term if we are to benefit from technology and avoid the downsides.